fellow preppers, survivalists, and vigilant citizens across the United States, I'm here today with a message of urgency and a call to action. You will be shocked by what they have in store for us. Before we go any further, there's something critical I need to share with you. This isn't just another update or a survival tip. This is about the future of our country, our freedoms, and our way of life. I've come across information, information that's taken me months to fully understand and verify. It's about the developments that are unfolding right now under our very noses, developments that will change the face of our nation. My fellow American brothers and sisters, what I'm about to reveal will not only shock you, but will also challenge everything we've been preparing for. It's bigger than any natural disaster, any economic collapse we've anticipated. In the coming video, I will lay it all out, the evidence, the plans in motion, and what this means for us as preppers, as citizens, as defenders of our liberties. But I need you to be ready, to listen with an open mind, and to prepare to act. 1. The Economic Warning Signs Let's take a moment to talk about something that's really catching my eye. Have you seen the latest Google Trends? It's like a window into what's on everyone's mind, and right now, it's showing us some pretty concerning stuff. Searches like, can't pay my credit card, can't sell my house, and I want to give my car back are not just popping up, they're skyrocketing. This is huge because it's not just about a few people struggling, it's a nationwide issue that's reflecting in these searches. Now, think about it. Why are these searches spiking? It's a clear sign that people are feeling the pinch, right? Wages aren't keeping up with inflation and it's hitting everyone hard. You might have noticed it yourself. The paycheck doesn't stretch as far as it used to. And it's not just a few isolated cases. This is a trend that's sweeping across the country. But here's the kicker. While all of this is happening, consumer spending has been propping up the U.S. economy. It's like we've been the backbone, keeping things afloat. But now, as debts pile up and people can't keep up with their bills, what happens next? It's a bit like a house of cards, isn't it? If we can't spend, what's going to hold up the economy? And let's dive a bit deeper into these Google trends. We're not just talking about a few extra dollars on the credit card bill. We're seeing interest payments on personal debt hitting astronomical levels. Over 500 billion. That's a staggering number. It's like we're seeing a mirror image of what's happening with the national debt. Those interest payments are skyrocketing too. So, what does this all mean for us? Well, it's a bit of a wake-up call, isn't it? It's showing us that the economic landscape we're navigating is shifting beneath our feet. These Google trends are like the canary in the coal mine, telling us that something's up and it's time to pay attention. We're at a point where the usual spending, the kind that's kept the economy buzzing along, might not be sustainable anymore. And I'm curious, have you felt this change in your own life? Are you seeing more of your income going towards just keeping up with the basics? It's a conversation we need to have because these trends are more than just numbers on a screen. They're about our lives, our struggles, and our future. 2. Home Depot's Strategic Pivot in Challenging Times Something pretty interesting happening with Home Depot. You know, in these tough economic times, you'd expect most big companies to be struggling, right? But here's where it gets interesting with Home Depot. Despite the overall decline in sales, they're actually doing better than what most people expected. Now, you might be wondering, how's that even possible? Well, it turns out, Home Depot's been pretty smart about adapting to our changing needs. With the economy being what it is, not many are thinking about big, expensive home renovations. Instead, what we're seeing is people focusing on smaller home projects. It's like, instead of redoing the whole kitchen, maybe you're just painting the cabinets or fixing up the garden. And guess where they're heading for supplies? That's right, Home Depot. But here's the really clever part. Home Depot didn't just sit back and watch this happen. They actively shifted their business strategy to align with this new trend. They're stocking up on what people need for smaller projects. And it's paying off. It's a classic case of a big company not just surviving in tough times, but finding a way to thrive. And think about it. This isn't just a story about a company making good business decisions. It's a reflection 
of how we, as consumers, are changing our habits. We're getting more practical, focusing on what's necessary rather than what's luxurious. Home Depot's success is like a mirror showing us how our own priorities are shifting in these challenging economic times. So what do you think about this? Have you found yourself changing the way you approach home improvement? It's fascinating to see how big businesses respond to these shifts and even more interesting to think about what this says about us as a society. Home Depot's story is just one example, but it's a telling one, don't you think? 3. Natural Resources All right, folks, let's dive deeper into something that's not just a headline, but a recurring theme in global conflicts. Natural Resources You've probably heard about the recent turmoil in the Middle East, right? Well, it turns out, it's not just about political ideologies or territorial disputes. The real driver? Natural resources, specifically oil and natural gas. Now you might be thinking, haven't we seen this before? And you'd be right. It's a pattern that's been repeating itself, echoing the motives behind conflicts like those in 2001. But here's where it gets really interesting. There's a specific region, a little strip of land, that's sitting on a gold mine of natural gas and oil. Yes, I'm talking about that contentious area known as Gaza. This revelation isn't just a footnote in a news article. It's a major piece of the puzzle. Why? Because Europe is in desperate need of these resources. Remember the Nord Stream pipeline incident? When that pipeline went down, it didn't just disrupt the flow of gas. It sent shockwaves through Europe's energy supply. Countries like Germany and England are now scrambling to find alternative sources to power their nations. So, what does this mean for us in the U.S.? Well, it's a reminder that what happens halfway across the world can have a direct impact on global politics and, ultimately, on our own economy and security. It's a complex web of deepened densities where energy resources play a central role. But here's the kicker. The discovery of these resources in Gaza could be a game changer. It could potentially reshape the energy landscape and, by extension, the geopolitical dynamics of the region. This isn't just about meeting Europe's energy needs. It's about the power struggle between East and West. The West, including US, wants to maintain a certain level of control and influence globally. But with the East developing its own economic systems and alliances, the balance of power is shifting. Now, think about the implications of this. We're not just talking about the price of gas at your local station. We're talking about the reasons behind military actions, foreign policies, and even the stability of entire regions. It's like a high-stakes game of risk, but with real countries, real people, and real consequences. So, as we watch these events unfold, let's not forget the underlying motives. It's not always about what's right or wrong, or who's the good guy or the bad guy. Often, it's about who has control over those precious resources that power our world. And as history has shown us, this struggle for resources can shape our world in ways we can't even imagine. 4. The Domino Effect Job Cuts, Strikes, and the Push for Automation The economic landscape we're navigating right now is like a complex, ever-shifting puzzle. Let's talk about some of the key pieces. Job cuts, labor strikes, and the relentless march towards automation. You've probably heard about major companies like Stellantis and Continental AG announcing massive job cuts. It's not just a few positions here and there. We're talking about significant numbers that impact thousands of lives. For instance, Stellantis is offering buyouts to roughly half of its U.S. salaried workers. That's a huge chunk of their workforce facing uncertainty. And it's not just them. Across various sectors, companies are tightening their belts. And unfortunately, it's the employees who are feeling the squeeze. But why is this happening? Well, one reason is the economic strain from recent global events. Businesses are trying to stay afloat in these turbulent times, and cutting jobs seems like a quick fix. But there's more to it. These job cuts are also a symptom of a deeper shift in our economy, the push towards automation. Think about it. Automation isn't just a futuristic concept anymore. It's very much a part of our present. Companies are investing in robotics and AI, eyeing a future where machines can do the work more efficiently and, crucially, more cheaply than humans. For instance, look at the auto industry. 
With the rise of electric vehicles and advanced manufacturing technologies, the need for traditional labor is diminishing. It's a trend that's picking up pace across various industries. Now, let's talk about the labor strikes. Workers are increasingly aware of their value and are demanding fair wages, especially in light of the soaring cost of living. The UAW, United Auto Workers, strikes are a prime example. Workers are not just asking, they're insisting on a 30% raise in pay. Sounds steep, right? But when you consider that the cost of living has skyrocketed by over 30% since 2020, their demands don't seem so unreasonable. It's not just about higher pay, it's about keeping up with the rising costs that affect us all. But here's the catch-22. As workers demand higher wages, companies are more incentivized to accelerate automation. It's cheaper in the long run, and robots don't go on strike. So, where does this leave the average worker? In a precarious position, to say the least. And let's not forget the role of government policies in all this. Tax incentives for automation, like the IRS Section 179 deduction, are making it even more attractive for companies to invest in technology over people. It's a move that might boost short-term profits, but at what cost to the workforce? So, what does all this mean for us? It's a complex situation with no easy answers. On one hand, we need to protect jobs and ensure fair wages for workers. On the other, we can't ignore the march of technology and the benefits it can bring. The key will be finding a balance where innovation and employment can coexist. But one thing is clear, the decisions we make today will shape the job market for years to come. How do we navigate this new landscape without leaving people behind? That's the million dollar question. Five, cybersecurity crisis. You've probably heard about these cyber attacks hitting major corporations, but there's a twist in the tale that's not just alarming, it's downright jaw dropping. Consider Mr. Cooper Group, a name that's been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Just before they were hit by a cyber attack, their CEO cashed out a whopping $25 million worth of shares. Now, isn't that timing a bit too convenient? It's like knowing it's going to rain and selling your umbrella stock just before the downpour. This raises a big question. Is there more to these cyber attacks than just external threats? And it's not just Mr. Cooper. We're seeing a pattern here. Other companies, big names like Clorox and Johnson Controls, have also been targeted. It's almost like a domino effect, but with a suspicious twist. These aren't just random targets. They're calculated hits that seem to benefit a select few within these corporations. Now, let's talk numbers. When we see a company like Mr. Cooper facing fines of $20 million for data misuse or a $3.6 million settlement for unlawful servicing fees, it makes you wonder, could these cyber attacks be a convenient way to lose incriminating data? It's a theory, but in today's world, where data is gold, it's not too far-fetched. But here's where it gets even more intriguing. These cyber attacks aren't just about financial manipulation. They're reshaping the corporate landscape. For instance, after these attacks, we often see a push for increased cybersecurity measures, which, let's be honest, isn't a bad thing. But who benefits the most from these upgrades? Cybersecurity companies, for sure. It's a booming industry, growing exponentially year by year. 6. The rising cost of living. You probably felt it too, right? Every time you open your car insurance bill or walk through the grocery store aisles, the numbers just keep climbing. It's not just your imagination. The cost of living in the U.S. is on a steep upward trajectory, and it's hitting us where it hurts the most, our wallets. Let's talk about car insurance first. In some states, like Florida, insurance premiums have jumped a staggering 80% in just the past 18 months. That's almost double what you were paying a year and a half ago. Think about it. A communication strategist in Pittsburgh saw her six-month policy leap to $720 even after switching insurers and bundling her home and auto insurance. And she's not alone. This is happening nationwide. But it's not just car insurance. Have you noticed the prices at the supermarket lately? It's not just a few cents here and there. It's significant. Essentials like bacon and everyday snacks like Doritos have seen noticeable price hikes. And it's not just a few isolated products, it's pretty much everything. In just a couple of weeks, prices have jumped again. It's a trend that's hard to ignore. This isn't just about tightening our belts a little. It's about a fundamental shift in our daily lives. 
how much longer can we juggle these rising costs without any significant increase in our incomes? How are families adjusting their budgets to cope with these changes? Are we cutting back on essentials or finding alternative ways to save? The data is clear and the trends are worrying. With car repair costs also up by almost 20% over the past year, it's not just about paying more at the pump, it's about higher costs every time your vehicle needs maintenance. And let's not forget the impact on our food choices. With every price hike, are we forced to reconsider what we put on our dinner tables? These aren't just numbers on a page, they're real life challenges that millions of Americans are facing every day. The question is, how are we going to adapt to this new economic reality? What strategies can we employ to weather this storm of rising costs? The answers to these questions are crucial as we navigate these turbulent economic waters. 7. Countdown to Zero in American Accounts You know, when we talk about the state of our economy, there's a detail that's not just worrying, it's downright alarming. Our savings, the safety net for so many Americans, are dwindling at a pace that's hard to grasp. Think about it. If the current trend continues, we're looking at a scenario where, in just 60 days after Christmas, the average American's savings could effectively hit zero. Zero. That's a situation we've never faced before. Now let's break this down a bit. Why is this happening? Well, it's a combination of factors, really. Inflation is a big part of the story. It's been rising steadily, and our incomes just haven't kept up. The cost of living is soaring. Everything from groceries to gas is more expensive now. Remember those stimulus checks during the pandemic? They were a lifeline for many, but they also contributed to this situation. The money that didn't go directly to us, the part that went to corporations and banks, played a role in driving up inflation. And now, we're all feeling the pinch. But here's the kicker. It's not just about not being able to save. It's about dipping into savings just to keep up with everyday expenses. That's right. People are not just failing to add to their savings. They're actively using them up to pay bills, buy groceries, and fill up their gas tanks. The Federal Reserve's economic data, FRED, paints a stark picture. We're seeing a consistent monthly drop in savings. If this trend doesn't reverse, well, you do the math. What happens when the cushion of savings is gone? This situation raises some serious questions. What does it mean for the average American family when there's no financial safety net left? How will people cope with unexpected expenses like a medical emergency or a car breakdown? And what about the long-term implications? Retirement plans, college funds for kids, the dream of owning a home. It's not just an economic issue. It's about the quality of life and the stress that comes with financial insecurity. The idea of living paycheck to paycheck is stressful enough, but what happens when even that isn't enough? 8. Labor strikes. You've probably noticed the headlines. Labor strikes are on the rise across the country. It's not just a few isolated incidents. We're talking about a significant movement that's gaining momentum. Workers from various sectors are walking out demanding fair wages and better working conditions. Why now, you ask? Well, it's a direct response to the economic pressures we're all feeling. Take a moment to consider the situation. Inflation has been skyrocketing, and yet for many, wages have remained stagnant. The cost of living is soaring. Everything from groceries to utilities is more expensive. But paychecks? They're not keeping up. It's no wonder workers are saying, enough is enough. Let's look at some numbers. The United Auto Workers, UAW for instance, are pushing for a 30% raise in pay. Sounds steep at first glance, right? But when you break it down, it's not as outrageous as it seems. Since 2020, the cost of living has jumped significantly. Over 30% in many areas. This includes essentials like cars and groceries. So, in reality, a 30% wage increase is just about keeping pace with these rising costs. And it's not just about higher wages. These strikes are a fight for dignity and survival. Workers are standing up against a system that seems increasingly skewed towards the top 1%. It's a David versus Goliath scenario, where the average Joe and Jane are taking on the corporate giants. But here's an interesting twist. Remember all that stimulus money printed in 2020? It was supposed to help, right? But a large chunk of it didn't end up in the hands of everyday people. 
Instead, it went to corporations and banks. And now, we're all paying the price through inflated costs of living. Those stimulus checks, which seemed like a lifeline, have turned into a financial anchor, dragging down our purchasing power. So, what happens next? As these strikes continue, they're not just causing disruptions in the immediate term. They're potentially reshaping the future of labor in America. This could be a turning point, a moment in history where the balance of power shifts, even if just slightly back towards the working class. But there's a catch. As companies face these demands for higher wages, there's a growing temptation to turn to automation. Why deal with human workers, they might think, when robots can do the job without any complaints or demands for fair pay? It's a concerning trend and one that could have far-reaching consequences for the job market. 9. Preparing for a jobless future The automation revolution is not just a buzzword. It's a reality that's unfolding right before our eyes. Think about it. Companies like Chipotle are investing half a million dollars a month in robotics and AI. This isn't a small-scale experiment. It's a major shift in how businesses operate. And it's not just about cutting costs. It's a strategic response to the changing economic landscape, including the push for higher minimum wages. Now, you might be wondering, what does this mean for the average American worker? Well, the implications are significant. As businesses invest more in automation, the demand for human labor in certain sectors is bound to decrease. We're talking about a future where many traditional jobs might become obsolete. Remember, this isn't science fiction. It's happening right now. Consider the tax incentives for companies investing in automation. The IRS Section 179, for example, offers substantial tax deductions for equipment purchases, including robotics. This policy doesn't just make it easier for companies to automate, it actively encourages it. So, what happens when a business can save a quarter million dollars on a million dollar purchase of robotic equipment? The answer is pretty clear. They're going to invest in that technology. But here's the real kicker. As more jobs are automated, what's the plan for the displaced workers? Sure, there's talk about retraining and shifting to new sectors, but is that enough? Are we prepared for the scale of change that's coming? These are questions we need to be asking, not just as individuals, but as a society. And then there's the push for a guaranteed income. It sounds like a solution, right? But let's think this through. If the majority of people are receiving a basic income because there aren't enough jobs due to automation, what kind of society will we be living in? Will this income be enough to sustain the lifestyle we're used to? And what about the psychological impact of not having work? Work isn't just about earning a living. It gives us purpose, a sense of contribution. So as we stand at the brink of this automation revolution, it's crucial to look beyond the immediate benefits and consider the long-term implications. How will our roles in the workforce change? How will we adapt to a job market that's increasingly dominated by machines? These aren't just rhetorical questions. They're urgent inquiries that will shape our future. 10. Cyber attacks. You know, when we talk about cyber attacks, there's often this image of a lone hacker in a dark room trying to break into corporate systems. But what if I told you that the reality might be more complex and, frankly, more disturbing? Let's dive into this a bit deeper. Take the case of Mr. Cooper, a major player in the mortgage servicing sector. Just a day before they were hit by a cyber attack, their CEO cashed out $25 million worth of shares. Now, isn't that timing a bit too convenient? It's not just about the financial loss from the attack. It's the timing that raises eyebrows. Could there be more to these cyber attacks than just external threats? And Mr. Cooper isn't an isolated case. We're seeing a pattern where companies facing internal financial troubles or regulatory fines suddenly report cyber attacks. It's almost as if these attacks conveniently divert attention from their issues. For instance, Mr. Cooper faced fines for data misuse and unlawful servicing fees. Then, bam, a cyber attack happens. Is this just a coincidence? Let's not forget the broader picture here. Cyber attacks are costly. They disrupt business, erode customer trust, and can lead to significant financial losses. For a company like Mr. Cooper, 
dealing with regulatory fines and then a cyber attack, the financial implications are enormous. But what if these attacks are a smokescreen? What if they're used to cover up or distract from internal issues? Now, I'm not saying every corporate cyber attack is an inside job or a cover-up, but when you see CEOs cashing out just before an attack or companies with shaky finances suddenly getting hit, you've got to wonder, are we seeing a new kind of corporate strategy unfolding? And here's another angle to consider. Cyber attacks can affect stock prices. A well-timed sale or purchase of stocks around these events could be very profitable. Is it possible that some insiders are playing this game? The implications of this are huge. It's not just about cybersecurity. It's about corporate ethics, transparency, and the trust we place in these companies. As consumers, investors, and citizens, we need to be aware of these possibilities. We need to ask tough questions and demand accountability. After all, in today's digital world, a cyber attack can be more than just a breach of security. It could be a symptom of deeper issues within our corporate world. Thank you for watching.